The chair now recognizes the ranking member of the subcommittee, the gentlewoman from Florida, Ms. Camley, for an opening statement. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman, and pleasure to see everyone here today. Thank you to our witnesses. In less than two months, our nation will collectively mourn the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. Following those attacks, the Department of Homeland Security was created to combat threats posed by Al-Qaeda and other extremists and terrorist groups. However, in the last 20 years, the terrorist threat landscape has changed dramatically. Terrorist groups and extremists have long strived to employ chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear materials as part of their attacks. In 2001, anthrax attacks highlighted the grim reality of a bioweapon. The powder was delivered through the mail, ultimately killing five people, making ill 17 and shutting down much of the Capitol complex. In 2017, the Australian government disrupted a plot allegedly hatched by ISIS supporters that involved setting off a device to release toxic gas in an enclosed public space. And even now, when we are finally looking down at the downslope of COVID-19, questions have been raised as to the origins of a virus that has crippled not just the United States, but the entire world, and has cost more than 600,000 American lives. It is imperative that we stand ready to counter these types of threats. The Countering Weapons of Mass Destruction Office was authorized in December of 2018 to elevate and streamline efforts to prevent terrorism using weapons of mass destruction. Unfortunately, CWMD has had its fair share of growing pains. Media reporting in 2019 indicated that the CWMD office significantly scaled back or eliminated programs specifically put in place to help protect the United States. According to reports, subject matter experts were removed from their areas of expertise, vital risk assessments were halted, and training exercise aimed at helping state and local officials were minimalized. Similarly, the GAO has issued several reports highlighting the many shortfalls that the office has encountered through its various programs. I am happy that we are here to hear from them today. For example, GAO recently found that CWMD had taken little action on assessing and working with cities participating in the Securing the Cities program on sustaining their detection capabilities. Securing the cities aims at reducing the risk of a successful deployment of a radiological or nuclear weapon against major metropolitan areas within the United States. Without analyzing risks related to sustainment and working with cities to address these risks, radiological detection capabilities around the country could and will deteriorate. GAO and DHS's Office of Inspector General have both reported on the longstanding challenges that CWMD has faced with regard to its biodetection technologies and BioWatch program, a system intended to detect biological agents and provide early warning in the event of a biological attack. Most recently in March, the OIG reported that the system monitors and detections of less than 50% of the biological agents known to be threats were because BioWatch had not updated its biological agent detection capabilities with their 2017 threat assessment results. Additionally, in July of just last year, DHS's OIG report stated that CWMD, although required under the Securing Our Agriculture and Food Act, had, quote, limited awareness of DHS and their ongoing efforts and cannot ensure it is adequately prepared to respond to a terrorist attack against the nation's food, agriculture, or veterinary systems. Considering the supply shortages that we have faced both last year and this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I cannot simply imagine the consequences if our food and agricultural systems were attacked. And I would be remiss if I did not mention the low morale CWMD has faced since the office's formation. In 2019, the CWMD office was ranked dead last amongst the like-sized agencies in the Partnership for Public Service Best Places to Work ranking. In 2020, while the office made silent, uh, slight progress, it ranked 403 out of 411 agencies, moving up only a handful of slots. A dedicated and motivated workforce is so important for the success of this office and these programs that maintain our nation's readiness to detect, deter, and thwart a terrorist attack. As I have highlighted in my opening statement, the Countering Weapons of Mass Destruction Office has unfortunately hit many roadblocks since its creation. I am hopeful, as is I'm sure the rest of our members of this committee, 
that this hearing will bring to light the underlying issues that have plagued the CWMD's success and that we may have a fruitful and candid discussion that puts us on a positive path forward. I thank Chairwoman Dennings for holding this very important hearing, and I look forward to hearing from our witnesses here today. And with that, I yield back.